everything started in this hallway. It's like a walk through time, filled with pictures that tell stories from a long ago. In the middle of these quiet witnesses, we start a journey, a trip through history pages, where every portrait opens up a story we haven't heard yet. As we walk down this hallway, it's like we're moving through different times. The walls show faces of our alumni and faculties who used to be in Congress, telling the country's story as it changes. From the ununified looks of early politicians in black and white, to the colorful and flagging hand photos of today's lawmakers, each picture shows a piece of history, reflecting how politics and public views have shifted. But I don't know if you have noticed the same thing as I did. Recent pictures of the 1960s tend to have a more unified look. They share similar backdrop colors, similar clothes, and most have a national flag in the background. Why people should do this? Imagine if these still moments could talk. What if we could see their stories, not just as history, but through today's perspective? This isn't just about faces and places. It's about exploring how patriotism and identity are part of the political pictures. In this project, I'll mix old and new, bringing these historical pieces to life with these symbols and colors. I'll ask tough questions about trust and patriotism, and use technology to turn these old echoes into a conversation with today. So let's start this adventure of discovery and new ideas. As we go deeper into this hallway, we'll uncover the stories behind these portraits, and maybe we'll learn something new about history and ourselves. I think I'm going to start with the generative file function with Photoshop. So I'm going to put this picture into Photoshop um, image mode RGB color, make it uh, in the color channel instead of, instead of black and white, because generative file would only um, work in the color mode. So I'm going to select subject first and select inverse. So it will automatically select the background, like everything else in, um, except, the, except the subject. And use generative fill, uh, let's see, a dark blue backdrop with a, sorry, with a US national flag. Oh, by the way, this is a real picture of a 19th century or 20th century congressman and that served the country. Oh, uh, this is not really good. Uh, what about this one? No. Uh, hmm. It's not doing that great. Uh, let's try again. A deep blue backdrop is the U.S. national flag. Uh, well, actually do this way. As the background. Uh, did anything happen? Oh, this is kind of a little bit similar to what I expected, but not much. Still, you can see the comparison between this picture, the generated picture, and the original picture. I would say it does add like a political symbol into it. Um, I'm going to try again. I'm going to actually delete this layer and use this tool, this lasso tool here. Select only this part of this image and say a U.S. national flag. Mm. Oh, I don't, what is this? This is definitely not a national flag. Oh, this is kind of what I would expect, uh, but still not that good. I would say a U.S. national flag uh, on the flag pole. Uh, this is even worse than last time. Probably it's because of this picture, that this area is so small. I'm gonna actually, don't save this picture. I'm gonna do another one here. Is there, go into Photoshop, uh, image mode, RGB color. I'm gonna directly try the lasso tool. I'll select this whole area here behind him. And generative file, so a US national flag with a, um, on the slide pole. Ooh, I don't know why, but it gives me a colorful natural flag. But this is, I would say this is very similar to like a Morton profile picture of a congressman. What about the next one? Ah, oh, this is even better. Ah, this is much, much better than what I expected. Uh, well, this one, no, this is not good. See, 
this is the original picture, and this is what Photoshop generated. Um, this is such a strong symbol in the picture. It added a lot of things to it. Um, I'm gonna try with another tool. I'm gonna try the mid journey. Imagine a 19th century U.S. Congressman profile picture. Well, let's see um, what Mid Journey gives us. So you can see there is one very interesting result here. Um, actually, this all of these four results are kind of interesting. This particular picture is black and white, and this one is very much like a photo. I don't know if it's just because it learned from all this big data, all the part patterns um, from previous pictures, or because I tried this so many times with Mid Journey uh, in other channels, you can, as you can see here, I tried so many times. Is it learned from my previous, like try its previous patterns? And also, it gives it a national flag as background. That's very similar to today's like modern practices. Uh, but still, all those four pictures, well, all three pictures here, looks like oil paintings instead of photos. Probably because I said profile picture instead of like profile photo. So I'm gonna try again. Well, as you can see, this time compared to the previous four pictures, well, previous, these three pictures, those four are more like photos and they're becoming black and white, probably because I said it's a 19th century congressman profile picture. Um, and all the clothing seems cracked and matches that time. Uh, now I will add something more to it. Oh, this is from previous command that I did a typo here, like back ground and uh, but still it doesn't affect I, I think it doesn't affect the result um, I think this picture right here and it's still not finished yet but this picture right here these two are kind of right this one here and this one here are kind of similar to what um, it looks like in modern in, in today's pictures but still I don't know why but it gives me a lot of like all those four pictures, all these eight pictures are in color instead of black and white. So I guess it kind of neglect the 19th century problem and focus more on the profile picture of its national flag. So I'm going to add one more command. Wow, look at this result here. But um, it's not very similar to today's picture, but look at this, how so many stars um, it not similar. It's not similar like to today's profile pictures of congressmen. Um, I'm gonna do one more command. Wow! Well, look at this image here. Oh, I used the picture instead of photo. So I'm gonna actually try one more time. I think I'm going to choose number three here. Save image. Now I'm going to put it into Photoshop. I'm sorry, Lightroom Classic. And first of all, make it black and white, totally black and white. But see how smooth, how smooth his face is. This doesn't look like an 18th century picture. So I'm going to add more texture to it. Uh, the haze a little bit. And, oh, play with it. Play with highlights, shadows a little bit, so decrease the contrast. That's gonna make it look like a very old picture. And oh, clarity, I can play with that. And then the most important step is here. Give it a lot of grains. Oh, this amount is good. Science, enlarge science, make it rough, like very rough. And give it some dark corners. Or maybe reduce the clarity a little bit. It's too clear for an old picture. Um, and still, his face is really clear. So I'm gonna try this new function here. Uh, where is it? Lens blur. Yes. I can blur his face a little bit. A little bit more, maybe more. Go back, yes. Uh, export. Export. So this is the like edited picture, and see how it compares to the original. It looks like 
it's I think it looks more like a picture instead of something generated by AI, right? As we look at these changed historical portraits, we are viewing the internal world where visual symbols are super powerful. Adding the American flag isn't just for style, it's a big statement about who they are and what they stand for. Back in the 1960s, things started to change a big time in politics. The flag began showing up a lot in these portraits, mirroring a nation that was really transforming. According to Dr. Michael Walzer, the rise and fall of political symbols are influenced by cultural changes and political changes. This time wasn't just about changing political views, it's about how politicians wanted us to see them. The flag turned a quick way to show patriotism, setting a stage for their careers. But what does the flag really mean here? Does it make the people with it seem more credible? Or does it push a more nationalistic view? We're digging into these questions to get a full picture, not to change history, but to understand the symbolism and how people see things. Human culture is a visual culture, from cave painting to selfies, we have always used images to tell stories about our lives, experiences, and our understanding of the world. These images are particularly potent when they not only depict but instruct us about social norms. When they shape attitudes and behavior on everything from the rule of people to ideas about nationhood. But the idea that a picture never lies is a powerful yet wrong adage, for they do not always tell the whole story. And the fact that images may be strategically constructed, manipulated, or chosen carefully to convey an impression can often get unnoticed by people look at them. As we go deeper into these updated portraits, we really see how powerful visuals can be. Putting the American flag in them is more than just for looks. Professor Robin Harriman from Northwestern University talks about the iconic photograph of the flag rising on Iwo Jima. He asserts that photograph resonates deeply with the U.S. public, symbolizing the country's role in World War II, and the flag embodies political identity of egalitarianism, nationalism, and civic republicanism, reflecting public attitudes like civic piety, irony, nostalgia, and cynicism. These portraits, when simple and direct, now tell a more complex story about political identity. Philosopher Charles Sanders Pierce has a theory of science, which is the trichotomy of icon, index, and symbol. The symbol is something that stands for an object through agreement or condition. The index is based on regular association or connection, while the icon is related to the object by a genuine likeness or similarity. On top of that, Professor Angu Miller from the University of Georgia notes, Portraits are a type of icon. They help in constituting political society by making authority tangible and visually accessible. But it's not just about the flag. Other things, like the background color, also means a lot. Professor Klaus Warner Sayer found out that certain moon tones had strong associations with specific colors, such as secure comfortable with blue. This result was confirmed by Dr. Lisa Wilms who points out that a arousal rating increased from blue to green and then to red. Human perception of the image is influenced by both biological factors and cognitive aspects. By adding the symbols to old images, we are really talking with history and diving into political psychology and the visual communication. And it's not just a flag that is interesting. Other symbols, like tiny pin, can also say a lot. Even something small like that can change the whole vibe and message of a photo. It's all about hinting at something, telling a story without words. And I have to say, this is not something unique. Think about Soviet propaganda pictures, which always have stars and red backgrounds. And one very common gesture is making a fist, which, according to Michael Walzer, shifts units around which emotions like loyalty and assurance can form. Yet, when these symbols lose their potency, they become mere decorative elements, failing to engage intellect or emotions. We have to wonder, how does these symbols, maybe without us even realizing it, change how we see these figures? Are we influenced by the patriotic vibes they give off? This is a problem, according to Professor Darren Lilliker from Bournemouth University, 
because images tap into a fundamental element of human reasoning. They have a resonant power to stir strong emotions of fear, dislike, love, hate, and everything in between. And they can be so carefully constructed, as he mentions former British Prime Minister Boris Johnson speaking in front of the ranks of uniformed police officers as an example of setting, which may have been planned to enforce an image of power and strength. In this exploration, we are doing more than just looking at pictures. We are diving into how politics talks to us. These colors, symbols, layout, everything tells part of a bigger story. All carefully put together, in this world of visual messages, every little thing is chosen for a reason, and it's a bigger story of history. As we walk through the gallery of Tinkle history, we are pushed to think: What are these pictures really seeing? And how does the way the use symbols of patriotism and power shape our understanding? We should look deeper, seeing not just pictures, but stories they are meant to tell. But everything has two sides. Dr. Darren Lilliker believes that the image's perceived level of influence is based on believability. Fake news, for example, is awarded far greater power if delivered with an image. That appears believable and reinforces the existing media truths and public beliefs, and some other tricks like slowing down a video to make a politician appear drunk, make the persuasive power of visual evidence highly dangerous. This is the power of images intersects with greater challenge of the digital age, and in terms of politics, especially elections, the digital age enables a more negative environment. It is too easy to create a simple attack message and gain traction, as voters create their own election campaign communication and associated memes. Still, politicians are also quite flexible. They started to use social media, and following the example of Barack Obama, many have embraced the use of selfies and social media tweets to buy themselves attention and to stay close with people. But as photojournalist Leslie Mullen suggests. Reality is seen as a construct of society, and truth is viewed as a contextual measurement, varying across different cultures and time periods. Since our understanding of reality is culturally dependent, the concept of an absolute, unchanging truth is questionable. And there is one more thing: what if I add some elements that have nothing to do with politics? What happens? When we infuse the state images with something unexpected, like a physical dodgy badge, this isn't just a playful addition; it is a statement. It challenges us to think about the arbitrariness of symbols and invites us to question about what we accept as as standard. Visual communication has become increasingly important over recent years, but we have to be very careful. What we see and what we perceive can all be manipulated. Who knows if there's any truth exists in the artificial intelligence age?